Hey there, welcome to Ready, Set, Jam, a game design competition where we bring together a group of game creators to compete in a series of game making challenges. Over the next three rounds, our contestants will have to create projects that will be played and rated by the community and our panel of judges. At the end of each round, the contestant with the lowest score will be excused from the competition until there's only one dev left. That's the basics of the rules. We'll get into it more after we meet our contestants. Yannick is a game dev and video creator with a master's degree in computer science. Over the last year, they created and released Spider Doll, an adorable mobile game made in Unity where you swing through levels and fight bad guys. Yannick also has another longer running project, where they're turning their jam game Divided Dungeon into a full release. They make devlogs for their projects and game jam games, and a lot of other fun content related to game dev. But Y11 is a game dev and video creator that's making a game called Couch Combat. It's a fast-paced action shooter where players need to grab guns from around a small stage and battle to the last one standing. But Y11 makes devlogs for this game and their game jam projects, as well as making video essays exploring specific games for analysis. Sidfish is a game dev and video creator who works as a data analyst and makes games using GameMaker Studio. They mainly focus on game jams and have made some great games in different genres. One longer running project Sidfish has been working on is a larger version of their game jam game called Pushy Worm, intended for mobile phones. Pushy Worm is a snakebird inspired game where you play as a worm dad that must solve movement puzzles to feed your three children. Helper Wesley is a game dev and video creator that works on many different projects and makes regular devlogs about their processes, as well as creating free pixel art assets that other devs can use. Helper Wesley has a longer running project as well that finds the player as a technical support worker in a space station orbiting an alien planet. Your job is to support the crew members on a research station below, but everything goes wrong and it's now up to you to help get those crew members off of that station quickly. Now that we know our contestants, it's time to find out what they have to do. The first round here on Ready, Set, Jam is the classic game round. Our designers will be tasked to recreate or reimagine a classic game in their own style. But we're also going to be adding on just a little bit of a twist. And this time, our classic game that they'll have to use as a theme is... Asteroids. Originally released in 1979, Asteroids is one of the first major hits in what's known as the Golden Age of Arcade Games. Created by Lyle Rains and Ed Long on hardware that rendered the game on a vector display, Asteroid machines filled arcades selling over 70,000 units. In the game, the player controls a ship that can fire to destroy asteroids and flying saucers while trying to avoid colliding with them itself. On top of creating a game with asteroids as a base, we're adding in a twist to add a little bit more challenge to our designers. And this time the twist is... Can't stop moving. So the round one challenge is set. Our designers will now have 48 hours over the next two weeks to recreate or reimagine asteroids with the twist of can't stop moving. Let's see how they do. I absolutely had no time at all. I was finishing my master thesis before this. So when I thought about how am I going to recreate it, I was basically just thinking about the rule that I have to apply. It was you can't stop moving. So I thought, why can't I stop moving? The most basic way to recreate the game with this rule would be just like making the same game but you can't stop moving. But this would be boring, so I didn't want to go down this route. So I thought, why can't I stop moving? And I thought of different scenarios where the player can't stop moving. For example, the asteroids get stronger when you stop moving, or you take damage when you stop moving. And then I just came up with the idea of you drop bombs behind yourself. So if you stop moving, you will destroy yourself. Then I just tried to make the game close to the original asteroids, but with this extra applied rule that I drop bombs and therefore you can't stop moving. For some reason, I had the idea of a spider, probably because I made a spider in a game before I did this game. <laughs> this might be the reason, but uh, the more I thought about this, the more I liked the idea, because in my mind I had this cool spider movement and what can fight spiders? Yeah, great, crazy, monster-like bugs. So I had very epic visuals in my mind that I couldn't pull off because I didn't have the time. So I tried to make this look as interesting as possible with just very limited art. So it's basically just a few circles and a few lines and I animated them. But I think for this, it looks kind of nice.
I've played a fair amount of Asteroids in the past, but I've never particularly liked it because of the slippery controls. My approach when making the game was the first just attempt to recreate the movement, but in a 2.5D layout. Then I started to put some twist on it, like how you protect a static planet from Asteroids instead of just dodging them, and overall the build process went okay. I really don't think my final game was all that fun to play though. The core gameplay was just very static and not that fun. I can think of plenty of smaller issues with it, but missing a solid foundation was the big issue. I ran into many challenges with the 2.5D nature of the game. The most annoying was whenever I spent many hours attempting to make a gun that aims at the mouse before eventually giving up and dropping the idea entirely. And I think not having this gun that aims at the mouse negatively impacted the game, making it even more static. The one thing I think I did pretty well was the visual design. I liked how the low poly models turned out and my custom background skybox looks pretty nice with these colors. The audio was pretty lacking though, but that's usually what happens in jam games. Overall, I think the game succeeds as its visual design and recreating the asteroids movement and 2.5D, but overall the gameplay and polish are kinda lacking. Yeah, so the first thing was re-familiarizing myself, went on website, played it a little bit. A few ideas were going through my head, but I just wanted, I knew I had 48 hours, so before I locked down an idea, I actually just started getting some placeholder art and just getting the mechanics going. Originally, I was actually thinking of making it a racing game, where you've got a few other ships and you've got to race around a lap in the galaxy and while avoiding other asteroids. But I was a bit intimidated by thought of needing to create AI for the enemy ships, and I thought that was going to be super difficult because I need to know how to navigate gate around the track and also avoid the other asteroids and I thought geez that's going to be way too hard and then I thought the idea of delivering something along the levels and it ramming into you I suppose I thought yeah that'd be super fun like you know there's there's a reason why you got to keep moving it's not you just know there's no breaks there's there's some there's a bit more to it if you know what I mean and juggling that with needing to sort of shoot the asteroids to um, power up the cargo. I, I, I couldn't really come up with some good law or some explanation for that. That's what I struggle with. But I figured, oh, look, I just set the instructions and had that as a mechanic. And if something came to me for the reason why you had to power it up, then I'd add it. But it, it never did come to me. So, you know, start adding my own art, start adding the juice and just tweaking through the gameplay and seeing what will be managed manageable for people to finish as well because I wanted not only I wanted people to play I wanted people to be able to go through it and um, finish the game as well and that was another reason why I didn't want to punish people too much either so if you deliver one bit of cargo then you don't sort of lose that progress when I heard asteroids with the twist don't stop moving the first game that came to my mind was a game called space run it's a game where you essentially go horizontally forever until you reach your destination and the whole time you're building onto your ship and aligning turrets and taking out asteroids and other ships i then looked up asteroids and stole whatever i could from that game namely the scoring system and the live system as well as the fact that asteroids and in my game icebergs break into multiple parts when they get hit and then the final game that I straight up stole from was Risk of Rain. It's a roguelike game where the difficulty scales over time to a ludicrous degree and the difficulty scale I basically put in place because of that game. The building process was actually really straightforward. The visual style I stole directly from my game Atomic Trail. The art style that was in the game really made the most of my lacking art skills. And so using that style in this game, along with the creepy effects and noises that I've been able to teach myself how to make, comes together nicely in this like horror-esque style game. Sadly, it's also an asteroid game, so it's not really the best match for a horror game, but it has its moments. I think the game succeeds at tension. That's one thing it does really well. The fact that you can't see all the icebergs at all times means that you're using one eye to focus on the iceberg that you're shooting at and trying to use your other eye to spot for other icebergs. So I think the game has this really nice tension that builds up over time as more and more icebergs spawn. Even though that's sort of undercut by the upgrades that you get throughout the game. At the beginning it's very tense and then by the end you've got five turrets firing at max fire rate and at that point it just it's a power fantasy. The build time is up and the games have been submitted. It's time to send them off to our judges to rate and play. Each round is scored by five judges in six categories. Art, audio, feel, originality, fun, and overall. The judges will be myself as well as my community. During the judging time frame, anyone on my Discord or Twitch was able to go and play the game and leave a rating. 
all community ratings are then averaged into one judge vote, which is combined along with mine and our three special guest judges. This time they are Sam Hogan, a fantastic game dev and content creator here on YouTube that makes a variety of projects using Unity, like the hardest game ever or a game inside a game, and even recreating Minecraft with no blocks. Tim Russwood, an amazing game dev and content creator that started the Game Dev Underground community and has either released or is working on releasing games like Phylophobia, Battle Barn Tactics, and the card game Murder Bunnies. Wallaber, another incredible game dev, video creator, and Twitch streamer, who is the lead designer on a little game you may have heard of called Where's My Water, as well as many others. Wallaber has also released games like Pro Gymnast, the Switch game Very Very Valet, and is currently rebooting their popular mobile game Jelly Car into Jelly Car Worlds. Thank you for the judges for taking time out of their schedule to play, rate, and give their feedback. Now let's see what they have to say. In Asteroid Beetles, you play as a spider trying not to be eaten by the beetles moving around the screen. To keep you from just sitting still, every few seconds you'll spawn a bomb at your location, and if you aren't moving away from it, you'll explode. After placing three bombs, you'll then have the brief ability to shoot in the direction you're facing before placing bombs again. The bombs are linked together so when one goes off, they all do. The goal of each level is to destroy all the beetles without doing the same to yourself. The judges all like the minimalist art, which feels very reminiscent of the original Asteroids game. With cute animations and a nice splash of color, the game has a very simple but clean look. The audio is really nice, with well-fitting music and sound effects. Although Tim did feel that the mix was a bit off, with the sound effects being a little overpowering. The game's movement and flow takes a bit of time to get used to and all the judges struggle with the controls at first, but the need to keep moving because of the bomb timer adds a nice level of tension to the game. Adding bombs to the Asteroids gameplay was a great way to integrate the can't stop moving twist. Sitting still for too long is deadly, so moving is crucial to staying alive. The controls are a big hurdle here. You move forward with W and turn with A and D like you would for a car game, but the turning happens on a dime which makes precision placement of bombs and maneuvering a bit tough to get used to. All the judges liked the idea and the aesthetics but ran into some issues with either understanding what they're supposed to be doing fully or some mechanical issues. Agreeing the game is almost there but just needs a bit more polish to bring it all together. In Asteroid Attack, the player controls a ship that must protect a planet from incoming asteroids. If the energy bar at the top of the screen runs out, you lose. The energy bar will go down on its own slowly, but it will drop by a lot if the planet is hit by an asteroid. Destroying the asteroid, on the other hand, will give you some energy back. Between each wave, there's a shop where you can buy buffs and upgrades. But be careful, because you can shoot your own planet, which will drop your energy as well. All the judges agree the low poly art is really nice and well executed, giving the game a great aesthetic while playing. But there was a feel that the UI is a bit bland in comparison. With no music, the audio is a bit lackluster and can make the other sounds more repetitive feeling. Every now and then you get long moments of silence which just kind of pull you out of the game. The sound effects that are in though work well. The feel is fine, but didn't really stand out to the judges. Aiming and avoiding the planet adds some tension to making your shots count more, and Sam was all in for the screen shake. All the judges liked the addition of the planet to protect, which changed up the asteroid mechanics nicely. The twist of can't stop moving didn't come across as much though, as you typically have better aim if you stay in one place. But the upgrade shop was also a really nice addition to change up gameplay based on style. The game is fun, but a bit unbalanced. Early waves feel almost too easy and long, but then all of a sudden there's too many asteroids and the damage scaling makes it feel impossible to take out large numbers. Overall, the game is a good idea, but definitely needs a bit more. I ran into a couple of unfortunate bugs, like saving up to buy the railgun and then it just not working, so I ended up dying because I could no longer shoot anymore. And we wish the twist was a bit more prevalent to the gameplay, but it's got some great concepts. In Cargo Chase, you play as a spaceship that needs to deliver cargo to different locations. The catch is the cargo will hurt you if you don't keep moving while you have it. You also can't deliver the cargo until you destroy and collect elements from the asteroids themselves. 
Destroying red asteroids will regain your health, which you will need because on top of taking damage from the cargo and asteroids, there are enemy ships that will start coming in to attack you as well. If you can survive to deliver five boxes, you win, and you're given the time of how long it took so you can try and beat it next time. The art of the game is fantastic. All the judges really enjoyed the look, specifically the color palette and the extra touch of the shadow of the ship that shows up on the platforms. The game has well-fitting music and sound effects. The shooting sound effect does get a bit overpowering and repetitive though, but all the judges love the addition of the voiceover messages to help with objectives. The game feels fun to play. There is a drift mechanic that the player can use to move a little bit differently that a couple of judges found to be hard to use or just unnecessary. But it's not needed to enjoy the gameplay, so it's just an extra thing if you really want it. Switching asteroids into a pick up and deliver game was a great take for all the judges. And having to destroy the asteroids to fill up the cargo is an awesome way to keep the classic destroying asteroids gameplay intact. The judges really enjoyed the game. It's challenging, but not too punishing. Death will only make you lose some time to respawn and doesn't make you start the whole game over, allowing for a nice player experience that never gets too frustrating. The game comes together to make a great package. The timer and difficulty setting adds nice replayability, and the gameplay itself is balanced and fun. In icebergs, you're a ship sailing through open waters to find a missing Coast Guard boat. You need to use the turrets and lights to find and destroy icebergs that threaten your ship. Doing so will give you currency, which you can then spend in the shop. To buy upgrades like more turrets, shot speed, or in a pinch, destroy all icebergs on screen. Every so often, a creature from the deep will appear to attack the ship, and you'll need to have enough upgrades to be able to take it down to continue. The art for the game is simple and minimalistic, but it uses the lighting really well to evoke a great atmosphere. Very clear and deliberate in its presentation. The audio adds to the quiet, isolated feel of the game, with a great cue for when the creature is about to arrive. The shooting sound effect does get a bit repetitive, especially when all turrets are equipped. Because of the quiet ambiance, there are some moments that feel a bit sparse, but the overall tone works really well. The slow movement of the turret adds to the drama of prioritizing where to shoot, and every so often they will turn red, which you can use the mouse to reposition one turret, which is a really nice feature. The waves of icebergs feel like they have too much time in between them though, because they're extended moments where you're just kind of waiting for them to appear. The idea is interesting and well executed, keeping the rotating and shooting incoming dangerous aspects of asteroids, while adding in more places to shoot from with an upgrade shop worked really well. The can't stop moving twist can be considered a bit weak as yes, the ship you're on doesn't stop moving, but it's more of a thematic addition and doesn't really affect the gameplay much. The judges all like the game and when there's action, it's really enjoyable. A bit of a balance for how long it takes for the icebergs to spawn would help, but as it is, it's fun to play with the power of order and see what aiming strategies work best. The game came out great with interesting mechanics and an awesome atmosphere. There is a bit of a cap as each time the creature shows up, it gets a little bit stronger and after a while, you can't take it down anymore because there's just no way to gain that much damage. And that's the judges' feedback. Let's take a look and see how it turned out. In third place and safe from elimination we have... Yannick. Asteroid Beetles is well done, but didn't jump out too much in any particular area. But it is enough to move you to the next round. In second place and also safe from elimination we have... Helper Wesley. Icebergs is dripping in atmosphere, and although there are some changes the judges would like, the game is very engaging and enjoyable to play. And finally, in first place, the winner of the round and the person that will be able to choose the challenge for the next one, Sidfish. Cargo Chase is an all-around great take on Asteroids and it's really fun to play. Scoring well in all categories with a great overall experience for the judges. Congratulations, Sidfish. Unfortunately, that does mean that But Why Levin and Asteroid Attack are sadly in fourth place and will be excused from the competition. There just wasn't much of the can't stop moving twist present, and we ran into a few bugs that hurt the enjoyment. But it's a great entry and has some really nice visuals. Thank you so much for taking part, and we look forward to seeing what you make in the future. Once again, congratulations to Sidfish for taking first place in the classic game round. 
Up next is the scope creep round, where contestants will have to take the game they just made and add in one of these three scope creep challenges. Which one will they have to add? Well, that's going to be up to our winner, and we'll find out which one Sid Fish picks next time on Ready, Set, Jam. Please remember to go check out our amazing game designers. Links to their channels as well as our judges are in the description below. I need to thank Gingerbeard4251 and Mr. Boxmonkey for all of their help. Without them, none of this would be happening. If you would like to help support the channel, keep these going and see more, giving the video a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell are all amazing ways to help out. Sharing this video with others you think would like it would also be immensely appreciated. If you would like to go a step further, I have a Patreon where you can directly support these videos, like these awesome people. Clone13, Cortland Massam, Curdle Games, Nightfall, It's Jeppy, Jed Jed, Kevin Haugau, Killboy Gaming, Motsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. I really can't thank you all enough for the support. If you would like to chat with me, the best place to do that is on my live streams at twitch.tv slash vimlark. We have a super chill community and I would love to talk with you. And we also have a discord full of even more incredible people. If you've hung around to this point in the video, you're the best. Thank you so much. I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.